Hello and welcome to Alive Kenya Book Club. Did you know that Haggai calls Christ the desire of all nations, and we may well call him the desire of all ages even, as he is the King of Ages? It is the purpose of these reviews to set forth Jesus Christ as the one in whom every longing may be satisfied. While we show glimpse into the life of Jesus through Ellen White's desire of ages, we may yet say the half has never been told. May the fullness of Christ quench all your unsated desires and the Holy Spirit bring life to the words in this book. Chapter 3. The Fullness of the Time The prophecy of Daniel pictured the glory of his reign over an empire which should succeed all earthly kingdoms and um, said the prophet that it shall, it shall stand forever, that this, this uh, deliverer who will come will stand forever as we find in Daniel chapter 2 and, and verse, verse 44. So a few understood the nature of Christ's mission, but we find that um, along spread the, uh, the, at the time, so many were not understanding what uh, actually Christ was, 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 was coming to do because they were looking forward to, um, to um, a, a political leader, but Christ was coming to deliver man from their sinful, sinful um, nature. But we realize that at the fullness of the time when it came, humanity becoming more degraded through ages of discretion, called to the coming of the Redeemer, because Satan had been working to make the gulf deep and impassable between earth and heaven. And by the falsehood that was there at the time, he had emboldened men in sin. You know, they were rooted in sin because they, they were the captives of the, the evil one. And it was his purpose to wear out the forebearers of God and to extinguish his love for man so that he would abandon the world to satanic jurisdiction. Um, now, we, we also find that the message of salvation is communicated to men through human agencies. Yeah, So God will still use human agencies to be able to communicate to communicate the message of salvation. And, and, and actually, this is, this is what happened as much as many did not still um, think that uh, the deliverer who was coming was coming to deliver them from the bondage of sin. And the people whom God had called to be the pillar and ground of the truth had become representative of Satan. That was at, at the time. And they were doing the work that he desired them to do, uh, taking a course of misrepresent, <clears throat> to misrepresent the character of God. Uh, we all know that God is, is loving and God is actually love, yeah? But we know the counterfeit that the evil one comes with it. As you and we read about the great controversy, yeah. God will show us his love, but the evil one will come and, and scatter that love and show us that um, even, even, even in the beginning, we, we, we still lived to face the, the sinful nature of this life because God does not love us. That is what Satan will come and, 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 and try and, and bring to our attention. But we find that, um, that, um, God actually came at the right time and he revealed to human race his love. And that is why even as we'll be continuing, we find that Christ came actually to relieve man from the oppressions that they were receiving because they were under, under the law, under the law, which was more of an oppression rather than a delight. And the very priest who ministered in the temple had actually lost sight of the significance of the service they performed. You know, we find um, we, we realize that the priests who were in the temples at that time, um, they would do things as if it was more of um, can I say like a ritual, or 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 uh, they became complacent of um, what they were what they were doing, and it was not giving them salvation or pointing them to the love to the love of of Jesus and the depiction of sin had reached uh, its height. All the agency for depriving the souls of men had been put in operation. The Son of God looking upon the world 
beheld suffering and misery. And you see, when Christ sees people under misery and when, when, when he sees the suffering of the world, he, he always come, comes through so that he can be able to deliver, to de- deliver humanity from um, the bondage and uh, the afflictions that sin come with. Sin had become a sense and vice of consecrated as a part of a religion. And rebe- rebellion had struck its roots deep into the heart. And the hostility of man was most violent against heaven. So it, it was just like a, like, a, like a fight, you know. The human rage wants to conquer. But we remember that in the long run, God will always be victorious. It was demonstrated before the universe that apart from God, humanity would not be uplifted. A new element of life and power must be imparted by him who made, who made the world. Amen. Um, so even as we just um, paraphrase the last uh, part of the, of the chapter, um, I think I'll just go through the, the, the charts after, after uh, reading the last portions, and then we'll have maybe uh, one or two people who can be able to give comments, and then we go to our session of prayer. Yeah, so we, we, we get to realize that uh, um, we are in this sinful nature, and with the intense intense of our fallen world, had watched um, to see Jehovah arise and sweep away the inhabitations, the inhabitants of the earth. And if God could do this, Satan was ready to carry out his plan for securing to himself the allegiance of heavenly beings. He had declared that the principles of God's government uh, make forgiveness impossible. You can imagine if God himself uh, already foresaw that, um, as in he put in place that if man would not um, obey me, would go astray, then there'll be provision for salvation. And actually, as we were getting even from chapter one, that it is actually for our good. Sin came, but it, it, has, it has actually helped us because Christ has come to bear it all for us. So Satan had come and he thought that he was going to conquer. He had declared that the principles of God's government make forgiveness impossible, but that is not what, what it is. The government of God makes forgiveness possible, and that's why we can always come to God in, in repentance and our sins are forgiven. Um, had the world been destroyed, who would have, would have claimed that his, that his accusations were proved true? But we, we thank God that as much as sin entered the world, um, existence still proceeded on and uh, we, we still come to, to, to realize that Christ, who was promised, came indeed and saved us and he's still in the business of saving humanity so that um, um, man may not get lost out of ignorance but out of choice. Yeah. Um, so as I, I wish to read the, the last portion that, that says that Satan was, Satan was exulting that he had succeeded in, in debasing the image of God in humanity. Then Jesus came to restore in man the image of his maker. None but Christ can fashion anew the character um, that has been ruined by sin. He came to expel the demons that had controlled the will. He came to lift us up from the dust, to reshape the mad character after the pattern of his divine character and to make it beautiful with his own glory. Amen. So that is who, um, um, that is who God is for us in Jesus. Christ himself had come to make to make everything beautiful um, with his own glory. And so I uh, just wish to, um, to remind us that uh, the promises of God 
whether it whether we see it to be taking long, whether we see it not to be taking place. Let's remember that God's, God's promises will always come to fulfillment. And he's not a God who disappoints, but he's a God who, who is true, who is loving, and um, who keeps his promises. As he promised that uh, the Messiah would come, actually in Bethlehem, Jesus Christ was born, and we can be able to have confidence in, in Jesus Christ that as much as we go astray, Christ is able to still redeem us. Um, and he has good promises that are in store for us. Uh -huh. So um, I think we'll only have uh, uh, two people uh, to, to, to just share what came out for them. Um, time really moves very fast. So I'll just pick, pick some... Uh, uh, uh so someone says but like the stars in the vast circuit of their appoint appointed path god's purpose no no haste and no delay yeah uh we picked that so let's just know that in god's in god's government there's no haste and there's no delay so at the right appointed time god comes to do that which he has a uh, planned to do there's nothing that can be able to make him tarry. There's nothing that can be able to, to make it to be before time. Yeah. In heaven's council, the hour of the coming of Christ had been determined. And when the great clock of time appointed to that hour, Jesus was born in Bethlehem. Amen. Uh, shall they come out with great uh, substance against that world, all the power of, of Pharaoh's proud emperor uh, battled in vain? Uh, then Frida says, through nature, through types and symbols, through patriarchs and prophets, God had spoken to the world. Lessons must be given to humanity in the language of humanity. Yeah, in a language that humanity can be able to understand. In other words, yeah, if we can be able to paraphrase it or put it in those words. The messenger of the covenant must speak. His voice must be um, heard in his own temple. Christ must come to utter the words which should be clearly and definitely understood. Amen. He, the author of truth, must separate truth from the shaft of man's utterance. Yeah, there must be a segregation. There must be a separation between what man, man utters and what God himself, um, who is the author of truth, um, will speak to us, to us, which made it of no effect. The principles of God's government and the plan of redemption must be clearly defined. The lessons of the Old Testament must be fully set before men. Amen. Uh, they long for a religion that could satisfy their, their, their heart, while the, the light of truth seemed to have departed from among men. There were souls who were looking for light and who were filled with perplexity and sorrow. They were thirsting for a knowledge of a living God, for some assurance of a life beyond the grave. Amen. Um, yeah, so a none but Christ alone can fashion a new the character that has been marred by sin. Yeah, thank you very much for all the, 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 the comments that you have given. I, 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 I trust and I believe that we have picked something. So one person uh, who has something burning, let's pray before we get the um, two comments. Uh, thank you, Lord Jesus, for always revealing yourself to us. I pray, O oh God, that your promises, which are true and amen, may be an experience in our lives. Forgive us for our trespasses, and I ask you, Lord, that you may continue to fill us with your Holy Spirit. Lead us, O oh God, and keep us faithful until you return. In Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen. Amen. Uh, to two people, if you can take 30 seconds, it will really do well. Hi, I could go first. Can you hear me? Yep. Your life is not going okay. It's mad with sin. Things are not falling into place. You just don't understand what's happening. You cannot explain why things are not falling into place. The hope from today's chapter is when that great clock of time strikes the hour, God will come through and he will order your life. Amen. Amen, amen. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.